Same. Melodies hypnotic and bad, heighten my dress, the pleasures ahead. Distant and brazy whispers, plans my heaven is held. Angel of saints stuck between heaven and hell. I am all yours, never alone. We belong to the end, bonds of this love is the son of it is. I am all yours, never alone. We belong to the end, bonds of this love is the son of it is. I can alright, yeah. What is going on, Culture Vultures? So today I'm coming to y'all with another video. And yes, this is another channel. We are on Pop Culture Pierre, all right? So today's video, I wanted to do a video on the 10 most embarrassing live TV moments that I've seen ever. So this is in regards to the whole trend that's going on on Twitter, where everybody's tweeting their clips from shows, award shows, TV moments in general that happened that was the most embarrassing. So here are my top 10 lists. First off, at number 10, we starting off with Big Liddy, Big Liddy, South Central Baddies, not Liddy. Liddy don't get mad at me, bitch, okay? So Liddy on season three decided that it would be a good idea to try to push a T-girl by the name of Joyce Tech Lady into the pool, but miserably failed. <laughs> The thing is, this moment wouldn't have been so embarrassing if she didn't get Shabbat upside the head. That's what made it worse. The Shabbat upside the head made it 10 times worse because not only she got you in the pool, uh, she bopped you upside your head. Uh, I will say this season caused a lot of controversy because it was a whole lot of T girls versus a cisgender women. So it was a whole lot of controversy in regards to this whole season, but it made for entertaining television. Okay. Tell me this makes number 10 because it's embarrassing because it wasn't what she intended to do. Like her end goal didn't get reached. So that's why it's at number 10. It's still a fairly new moment. So it hasn't picked up the viral the viral list that it could so that's why we're at number 10. shout out to lady though make sure y'all go subscribe to her channel okay now number nine is something that is still recent as well so it's when shay sat with her mom and told her mom that she was pregnant by her bd again okay now this moment isn't the best because it's kind of sad i kind of felt bad for her but the mom's reaction to me is what made it embarrassing and it, to me what made it funny. Because you would have thought that, like, she literally did the worst thing in the world. Like, she unalived a group of people and is telling her mom, like, why would you do that? Literally, that's what the mom said. Now, I know you ain't doing that. I can't believe you did this. That's why I don't tell you nothing. Because why you do that? Why I do what? This taught me, this why I was talking about parents, nothing, okay? Because they're judgmental. Because <laughs> case in point, that's so embarrassing. Like, damn, on TV too. Like, the least she could have did is be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry uh, about that. Like, damn, I'm not happy. And then snapped on her off camera and get front of, why would you do that off camera? On camera is crazy. Uh, respects and kudos go out to Shay because apparently she did end up losing the baby. So, like I said, this isn't a comedic moment. The only part that makes it a little funny is the mom's reaction. But the situation itself is actually, like, really sad and embarrassing. Okay? At number eight, we have Rashida and K. Michelle. So, the reason why I put this as an embarrassment moment is because of Kirk. Yeah, okay? Due to copyright, I can't play the video. Kirk's earrings make this number eight because Rashida realized in that moment that Kirk had three earrings and she was missing two. <laughs> because it's as if like she was like, oh, what, what, what you say? Like, it's like she forgot that he had a three pierced earring, which I'm like, I'm not really a fan. Like, ooh, on niggas, it's crazy. I remember I had, I, I don't know if y'all remember, I had up here pierce. It was so irritating. I couldn't even keep it in. Like, certain ear piercings are just like, oh, it's too much work. So imagine three all in one ear and you're a nigga. Like, I couldn't do it. This was embarrassing because Rashida didn't really have a comeback. So all she could do is like, 
a whack her purse to try to hit K Michelle, but K Michelle's a verbal assassin. She might not be a fighter, but she knows how to fight with her words. That's what makes her so strong. So the fact that she couldn't combat that, I think sort of ticked her off. And that's what made it embarrassing because she just didn't expect that to happen. Okay. Coming at number seven, we have Donna and the deaf girl off of Black Ink Group. This was embarrassing for the deaf girl because she told, Donna told this girl, fight with your inside hands. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was funny, okay? She said, talk with your inside hands. Donnie was dead ass wrong for hitting that deaf girl, but not, not. Then again, the deaf girl said, she was, you see my fingers? You, she, the deaf girl, like, you was doing a little bit too much hand action in her face. Somebody would have been popped you. They say, deaf or not. So it was embarrassing because, Donna, you were fighting a deaf girl, which is like, whoa. The situations Donna used to put herself in on Black Ink Crew needs to be studied and awarded. We need to do reality show awards because Donna deserves an award because every season, you didn't know if Donna was going to date a crackhead up the street <laughs> or a sex addict on Figaro. Like, you never know what Donna was going to be up to. That's what made her so exciting. This was embarrassing for the deaf girl because she didn't end up getting a little bit what And two... Of course, we couldn't understand a lot of what she was saying because I don't think Donna could read sign language. So it was more embarrassing for her than anything. Okay. Coming at number six is your wig is in the car. So this scene is when LaQuisha Malaysia Pargo sat down with OG from Basketball Wives. As you can see, the wig, the wig was in bad shape. It was extremely bad shape. She tried to do the bedazzled along with it. And I love me some OG, so not too much. But that wig was too much. She had the bedazzled interwoven in the wig. And her leave out was leaving out. It was just leaving out everywhere. Okay? The wig was really bad. And what made it embarrassing is because her and Malaysia had a, a shady back and forth, not cursing, not anything, but sort of like, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Like one of those back and forths. But she decided to insult Malaysia and her wig. Now, your wig, OG, compared to Malaysia's wig, her wig wins. So Malaysia decided to shade her in the confessional and said, your wig is in the car, which was hilarious to me because as the scene went on, we see OG's hair go back in time, okay? That was the first wig to time travel. So it was really embarrassing because you didn't have to insult her using the word wig because your wig couldn't talk. It ran. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, ugh. that's why I was embarrassing for OG. OG never lived this down her whole season. They poked at her fashions the whole time that she's been there on um, damn basketball wives. And of course, we saw the treatment of her. So this was embarrassing. I love me some OG, though. I do feel like she was one of the realists that appeared on basketball wives, and the girls couldn't take her. That's why she couldn't stay. Okay. Now, off to number five on the list. We got Sheree. Now, in this reunion, Bravo, Andy, asked Sheree, when is your joggers coming up? Her She by Sheree line. And she couldn't give an answer. So she gave a run-on answer. <laughs> That's how you know Sheree full of shit and the truth ain't in the bitch. Because how you give a run-on answer when somebody asks you a direct question? She couldn't even give us a certain date. She said spring, spring, summer, September. S September, spring, summer. Which are three different seasons. <laughs> September is the fall. Spring is early of the year. And summer is in the middle. <laughs> so Sheree literally said that her clothing line was going to come out in three seasons. <laughs> All at once. <laughs> you couldn't take it, okay? Sheree couldn't take it. And the girls were mad, all right? This was so embarrassing. I remember watching this live. And when that when it got to that moment, I said, oh, my God, this is so embarrassing. 
<laughs> because you could tell she just made that up right then and there. And see me, I can't lie that good. Like, I just can't lie that good. Like, I'm too much of, like, I have too much of a poker face when somebody asks me certain questions that I wouldn't been able to come up with no lie like that. Like, that to me is a little bit like, damn, you're quick, bitch. Okay? Coming at number four, we got Maurice. RIP to Maurice. Maurice is no longer with us. So RIP to Maurice. Um, if any of his mem family members run across this video, or anybody that knows someone across this video, I do not mean any disrespect, but this was a very embarrassing moment. This is Love and Hip Hop New York, the first season when Maurice was talking scrap crap about Chrissy, and Chrissy was telling Samaya, you out here winging this shit. You winging this shit, okay? Samaya couldn't take that. Because she moved to New York singing, Would you still love me? I'm a bossy babe, tight face, pretty face. Would you still love me? She couldn't take that because the fact that she was called out for winging it. So after, you know, Maurice got a hold of this, she he was popping hot shit. Said Jim Jones wasn't the hottest member on Dipset. And then next thing you know, Jim Jones came with the set. It almost fucked them up. <laughs> I watched this live too. As a young kid, even around this time, I'm going to tell my age. I was around, I think, in elementary school when this was airing. So uh, watching this uh, live, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> this is crazy. He used to, like, I thought he was going to get, like, unalive. I was like, oh, my God, they're going to really unalive somebody who love hip-hop. This is crazy. It was insane to me. Uh, I feel like it was embarrassing because they made him apologize to the camera. Apologize to the camera. Apologize. And then he was like, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I do not mean any disrespect uh, to Chrissy, uh, Jim Jones' wife. You know, I, I I respect her. Made her. It made him apologize to the camera, squeeze his face like a baby in a fishbowl, and he was just shocked. I felt extremely bad for the man, but he deserved it. He was popping shit. You didn't think her, her man was going to check you. Jim is still, he still didn't marry her, but he's still going to have Chrissy back to the day he dies. So not too much. Okay. On to number three, we have Jessica Dime and her chain. So this was on Marriage Boot Camp and Soldier Boy thought, like I said, I can't play out the videos due to copyright purposes. Soldier Boy thought that he could check Jessica Dime's husband because Jessica Dime said and uh, said a statement to him, and Soulja Boy said, "Man, I don't give a f about any of that." Jessica got up, put her hands on her hip, and they both was talking to him like some toddlers, as you guys can see. She said, "Man, what you talking about, man? I could I whoop your ass, man. What you talking about, man?" All the Memphis came out of Jessica and the husband. <laughs> Soulja Boy literally got Little Boy by a couple. That was the first time I think I've seen that on TV. <laughs> Jessica says, she, I whoop your ass. And I can truly believe it. Soulja Boy is thick. Dive is a thick girl. Okay? And her hands, to me, seem heavy. So Soulja Boy, he would probably, she would probably snap you in half. Okay? Them not one of them girls you could hit on. Because she hit you back. Okay, Soldier Boy deserved it because during that season he was treating Naya. I remember watching this like complete crap. Okay, uh, Naya was treated like trash by him throughout the whole season and just in life and love hip hop and stuff in general. And I think that's what irritated Dime even more because she witnessed some of this and just wasn't having it. Okay, at number two, we have something I could play is Fergie singing the national anthem. Is embarrassing because she should know how to sing.
Fergie sounds like she was doing a song off of Fifth Element. <laughs> you sound like you was doing an opera song. The thing is with the national anthem, if you overdo it, it gets overdone. Nobody wants to listen to you doing an operatic version of it. It was really bad for Fergie. I think she was extremely embarrassed. I think this was more embarrassing than the time that she peed on herself. So this to me ranks at number two because she should have done better with her being a singer herself. That's her profession, okay? Of course, every uh, it went viral because of the players' reactions and them laughing at her and trying not to laugh and keeping the laughs together. And that's what made it even funnier. Number one, brrr, it's going to have to be Lil Mama posing as Miss Beyonce. A lot of people don't talk about that moment in that red carpet where somebody said, Little Mama, what are you doing? What, what are you coming as today? And then little mama says, I'm little mama posing as Miss Beyonce. And she started walking around the carpet and voguing. And then the reporter said, uh-huh, work it. <laughs> little mama has given us a lot of iconic moments, but this is number one. When she walked on stage and got on there with Jay-Z and Alicia Keys, I watched this live as well, the most hectic VMAs that we've ever seen in MTV. Oh, yeah. She really outdid herself. It was extremely embarrassing. I felt really bad for her because you could tell Jay-Z was livid, but didn't want to show it. If he could backhand her and not get arrested, he would have did it. He was like, how dare you come and disrespect my, Nash, my New York national anthem like this? I don't know what was up with Lil Mama that day, but for her to think that was okay to do is kind of crazy because like, it's disrespectful. You don't interrupt an artist's performance and hop on stage because that's just common decency. Like, why would you do that's like hopping into a football game in the middle of going on? You gonna get your ass beat. He's lucky. She's like it was them two and not another artist. Because us, some other artists, they would have did some stuff. I feel like Kanye would have touched her. No, Jay. No. She got the right artist that time. I will say though, I think people need to kind of get over it especially if Alicia Keys has forgiven her, which she has said, I don't know if Jay-Z has, to kind of give her some grace. Because they have dragged her about this since the end of time because it's kind of like, why would you do that? But I do think it's a little bit too much uh, sometimes when it comes to her, okay? Let me know what y'all 10 most uh, embarrassing TV moments are. I know it says live TV, but we just gonna say TV, okay? Leave your comments down below of what y'all think y'all most embarrassing moments are and we out y'all.